Banakam, Namaste and blessings to everyone. I'm going to talk to you about rhetoric. Now, during my PhD, in which I studied the Indian parliament and the way different parliamentarians performed versions of themselves using the analogy of parliament as a political theater, I basically used a framework to understand the body language, the rhetoric, and the ways in which people chose to selectively present themselves to others so they would achieve some or gain some political capital. All right. So long story short, politicians equal actors. My job was to figure out what show were they putting on and why was that effective. Okay. So and some of this will be totally new to some of you. And for some of you, this is really old stuff. And that's fine. I'm talking to a general audience. No one please think that I'm talking down to you. Just keeping this as general as possible. So some forms of rhetoric appeal to logic. Some forms of rhetoric appeal to emotions, to pathos. And some forms of logic appeal to some kind of sense of morality, something that is a value or an ideal or a norm. A norm is a good word for it. Those are ethos-based appeals, just really, really, um, you know, oversimplifying these categories. And what I see happening now, especially on Facebook, and this has really been pissing me off, is that people are mixing these categories in ways to actually exert power over others. I, I get that in Parliament, but God damn it, did it have to come to Facebook? It's been here for a while, obviously, but this tendency is just coming up now. So think of this as political scientists, very, very, very brief analysis of what goes on in, in the waste, oh, did I say wasteland? Oh, uh, in, the, in the virtual space that Facebook can actually be. Sometimes you will meet people who literally are telling you, well, I've made this conclusion based on the fact that these are my assumptions, this is the, this is the argument, this is the way it connects, and this is my conclusion. And generally, those kinds of arguments are easy to follow. The issues with those kinds of arguments is that people do not always share the same set of fundamental assumptions. So, for instance, someone might say, well, women are meant to be at home, therefore, they shouldn't be going out doing this. Therefore, they, this piece of legislation should give them a disincentive to go out and find their own careers and rather to stay at home and take care of children. That is a logical form of analysis. But this is the thing. Logic is not subjective. It takes certain assumptions with a given value of truth and it follows through those assumptions based on the inner logic or rather the, the inner the internal dynamic of whatever assumptions they've chosen to throw into the pot. That is a logical form. The key word here is form. So you can actually find someone making a crazy ass argument, but using a logical appearance. And the fact that they've chosen to use a logical appearance almost makes them seem much more reasonable. And this is where we really need to be careful with whoever we choose to listen to. If someone is going out of their way to try and sound as stable, as sane, as measured, as ordered, as absolutely reasonable as possible, ask yourself, what is the agenda? In human interaction, we do not necessarily need to present ourselves that way all of the time, unless that is just our nature, which is fine. You don't need to go around suspecting everybody of picking things. That's kind of, you know, if you do a PhD in Parliament, maybe then. <laughs> but... Um, Second type of appeal, and this is what we often, if this is what we see less of actually, except among certain groups in the spiritual community, we see the appeals to pathos, to passion, to emotion. So these are the types of appeals that go, please listen to me because I feel this way. Please listen to me because these are my emotions and they matter. Tears. This too is a form of rhetoric. This too is a form of rhetoric which is highly effective. So, you know, for instance, if we see the argument of, let's say, you know, two people in a fight and one person going, but I'm so very hurt. The, in the inclination for most people is to kind of go to the person who appears to be hurt and not to the other person who appears to be fairly, you know, fairly unaffected by it. Because as, hu as human beings, for the most part, we are effectively rather empathetic creatures, you know, Dif differing degrees of empathy, but we tend to look at the person who is crying their eyes out and weeping, or at the very least, we tend to focus our attention that way. Now, some people use these forms of rhetorical appeal to actually mask a different type of agenda. 
So let us say, and this actually came up uh, quite a bit uh, when I shared a post by a friend of mine that some people found offensive. I personally did the research, looked into it, and just kind of went, no. But what then happened was everyone started speaking out of their personal experiences and their wounds and their rage. And they occupied a certain center of attention in the group, taking away from my friend's message and taking away from who she was and using the space they had created by the sheer power of their emotions. When a person holds an emotional space, what tends to happen is that they then give terms to or dictate to others how they should also feel. It's kind of like a hook. If you feel for me, if you feel for what I am saying, therefore you must also feel for whatever it is that I am talking about in the same way that I do. Not everybody who plays the I'm very, very proud, joyful, sad or angry card is actually really feeling those emotions. This too is an extremely sophisticated form of self-presentation, which has a whole lot of weight behind it. So in other words, first one said things that look logical may not necessarily be logical in the way we understand the term on a daily basis. Look at the assumptions that underpin the argument. Number one, usually appeals to logic, try to make you believe that someone is somehow more reasonable, more educated, more well versed in the nuances of discourse. And that alone gives credence to a lot of people who shouldn't have credence. Trope two is basically the pathos based appeal. This is when our hearts are basically targeted and we are asked to see the world in sympathetic resonance with the person who is delivering the message to us. Sometimes people do speak from their heart and that's fantastic, but sometimes it's not their heart. It's their ego. There is a difference between the two. And in Facebook land, hell in politics, in daily life, it really, really comes down to being able to discern. Is this person using their emotions to get power or are they really just saying what they feel? Trop two. Trop three is ethos based appeals. Now, this is probably the least um, that I've observed. This is probably the least commonly seen appeal that is that is done. Personally, I wish I'd see more of it. But ethos is is more of the appeal that goes, well, we should be doing this because this is the right thing to do. Now, the art of uh, or rather the art of debate and the art of argument, I think, died somewhere. But where we was before, probably be well before 2012, but <laughs> I think we're kind of realizing just how dead it's been. But the art of argument seems to have died in public discourse uh, a while ago. And so we actually see little room for the third form of appeal, which is, of course, that appeal of, well, we should be doing this because it's the right thing to do. There is an intrin now ethos based appeals aren't as effective online, for instance, because they require you to have a certain set of basic cultural constructs, a certain set of values that do not require the other two types of appeal. You would most commonly see ethos based appeals in groups with very, very strong similarities. So, for example, you know, if, you, if it's a if it's a group on uh, environmentalists, you don't need to give them the this assumption leads here or the. But I really feel for this cause. You would simply go, well, guys, this is who we are. This is what we do. This is what we're doing. And this is where Facebook has been both a blessing and a curse. With the diversity of views and opinions, it becomes very, very difficult to pitch an ethos based argument because we are not in we are not all in the same group. We are members of overlapping and multiple groups. And so selling that to people doesn't work. Sometimes, you know, it can be for a really noble reason, like we should save the planet just because because that, that doesn't need to be a reason for it. It's the right thing to do. But. What, what I often see in tightly focused narrow groups is that they actually skip the fact that they need to justify what they're saying or they skip the fact that they actually need to discern their emotions vis-a-vis -vis their own egoic responses. They skip all of that and just kind of go, guys, this is who we are. This is what we're doing. And there is a quality of self-reflection that is missed there as well. Each of these rhetorical appeals have certain forms or certain ways they appear. And each of them have their flaws and their strengths. And each of them are things that you will see in your daily environments, especially in this highly, highly charged political climate, not just in the U.S., but all over the world. Remember that these are forms. The way people say things exerts more power than the content of what they say. And 
you also cannot really judge a person on whether or not they have the language and the rhetorical skill set to be clever enough in that sense to actually manipulate these tropes. So someone who can present themselves as very logical, as very analytical, can actually sell you a complete, complete piece of BS. And you might believe that person because they use that logical language very well. You know? Um, when we, if you find someone who is ranting and raving on the internet, it's very easy to project on that person a, a quality of instability or emotion, a lack of grace, a lack of sophistication, and that can be also incredibly wrong. Some of the truest, deepest, rawest people I know just don't bother with BS. Just they don't, they don't bother with the flowery language. I am an academic, and yes, I damn well use that language when I need to. Some people tr get triggered by it, but it's their problem. But it's also kind of the way I am. I, I used to read encyclopedias and shit when I was like three or four. It's just the way I think, right? But you will see, you can always tell the difference. You, when, if you see someone interacting with a crowd in a certain way, and they interact um, with someone they know in a completely different way, you've got to see who they're putting a show on for and why. Is the form of rhetoric they use actually helping them convey their true message? Or is it actually just a smokescreen? So is someone who is absolutely bearing their heart to you really, truly doing that? Or are they just trying to find a way in so that you can emotionally be pulled to vote or think or feel the same way as they do? These are subtle things, which I think that everyone needs to have a handbook for to navigate in this day and age. But, you know, it's, it's, it's some of those things that I had to spend quite a bit of time looking at and understanding. So, yeah, keywords, don't judge anyone. Don't try to extrapolate who a person is on the basis of what they say, but maybe look at how they say it. That actually might be more important. And remember, no matter what anybody says at the end of the day, you are your own being. You are your own person. Listen to what you have to say and what you have to feel. So that's what I got to say. It's not an astro video. Don't know if you guys are going to like this or not, but it had to come out. I kept seeing too much of pretentious pseudo-intellectual BS. And I was just like, no. <laughs> just, 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 hell no. <laughs> But anyway, um, I hope this video is of use to some of you. I know it's a little long. And uh, take care and God is blessed. Ciao, ciao.